What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're talking about my process of editing 4K video on the new iPad Pro. And it was actually quite impressive and surprising to me at the same time that this was totally possible without any lag or any delays, and it really was effortless in, in many ways. And in case you didn't know, the last video that I posted about the iPad Pro, I actually edited on that iPad Pro. So if you wanna check that out, you can check the link in the description or in the iCard but it's pretty cool stuff and today we're gonna to talk about how I did it. So really the only requirements to this process is that you have an iPad Pro with an ample amount of storage. And this will even work on the previous generation iPad Pro. Don't think it's limited to the brand new one, but you want a lot of storage because you're gonna be importing footage from your camera into the iPad, so it's, it's gonna take up some space. And while this isn't a requirement, I do recommend that you have an Apple Pencil because this thing is like the mouse for an iPad Pro, and especially in video editing instances, it works great adding a super level of precision to your editing and, and stuff like that. I highly recommend this guy for this process. All right, so let's talk about the basics. Getting the footage from your camera into the iPad Pro, the easiest way to do that. Okay, so there are a couple of different things here. First off, if you're using a Canon camera, it's gonna be super simple. You can actually just use Apple's USB Type-C to SD card reader or any USB Type-C to SD card reader, plug it into the bottom of the iPad Pro, plug in the SD card, and the Photos app will pop up and allow you to import your footage. Super simple. Now, I only have Sony cameras to test out here, but there is a little bit of a different way to do this if you're using a Sony camera. For example, I have the a7 III and a6500, and in both of these instances, you have to make sure you have the camera settings set up a certain way. So if you go into your menu, you wanna make sure that you have the file transfer type set to M. TP, and then you wanna turn off USB power supply and doing those will save you a lot of headache during this process. Some people would say actually that importing footage from a Sony camera is a lot easier than anything else because you don't even have to take out the SD card. I mean, with the a7 III right here, we have a USB type C port on this guy. So you can easily just take the charging cable that came with the iPad Pro, plug it into the a7 III, into the iPad Pro, and then you're good to go. It'll pull up the import window and you can import your footage. Now, if you have something that doesn't have USB type C, like let's say the a6500, all you're going to need is a USB type C to type A dongle, which you can easily pick up from either Apple or on Amazon, or I'm using this little USB hub that I use for my MacBook Pro. And all you do is you plug in the micro USB into the camera, plug that into the hub and the hub into the iPad Pro, and then it'll recognize just the same. Now transfer speeds for importing are going to vary depending on your connection to the iPad Pro itself. But for the most part, it's not too bad, especially if your footage isn't that big in size to begin with. So really, once you have everything imported onto the iPad, uh, the process is a breeze. Now, I personally am using an app called LumaFusion to do all this, and I think that it's probably the most powerful editing app on the App Store, like period. There's nothing better than LumaFusion in my opinion. There is also a way that you can import footage from online sources such as Google Drive or iCloud Drive, things like that. There's Dropbox support. There's a lot of different options in there as well. Now I will say real quick, one of my favorite things about LumaFusion is the fact that it supports LUTs and you can easily import LUTs from iCloud Drive. I did that in my instance anyway. I went ahead and set up an iCloud Drive folder that has a bunch of editing resources in it that I can pull from as I need. So I have all my LUTs stored in there. I can easily import one right into the app and then use it and apply it to my footage. It makes my color grading process a little bit easier. I mean, aside from all of that, all that setup work involved, everything is pretty smooth sailing from there. I mean, once you have your footage in LumaFusion, you can just drag and drop into a timeline and you can start cutting away. And like I said, using the Apple Pencil to precisely you know, trim your clips and drag things around has been a huge benefit to me. And you can do this with the first gen or second gen Apple Pencil. Like I said, this will work on any generation iPad. I guess it's just depending on what kind of demanding video task you're trying to do. I was easily able to go through the entire process of editing, color correcting, exporting, and uploading all from the iPad Pro without any help from a MacBook. And for that, I was super impressed. So this isn't like a full tutorial on how to use LumaFusion because there are a wide variety of editing apps on the App Store and including iMovie, which comes free 
with an iPad when you get it. But for me, LumaFusion was the right way to go with my workflow. Like I said, it supports custom LUTs. I can trim clips before I drag them into the timeline and it has keyboard shortcuts and stuff. So if you're using the smart keyboard with the iPad Pro, you can do things like, you know, press the space bar to start playing, stuff like that. Just makes things a little bit easier and overall, I, I mean, I can't say enough good things about LumaFusion. So a lot of people wanted to know if it was slower or faster than editing on my MacBook. And to be honest, once I got through like just the learning curve and, and not treating it like a MacBook replacement per se, but treating it like its own creative tool, it was very easy and it didn't take really any longer than editing on my MacBook did. Like I was really surprised at the whole thing. Like I never thought that this kind of workflow would be possible on a tablet. But I don't know, I wanna know what you guys think in the comments section below. And if you want more details about anything that I did on here, how I accomplished it, definitely be sure to leave your comments below and I'll go ahead and answer them as best I can. But if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you're the first to be notified when a new video drops. And also leave this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more stuff like this about my workflow with an iPad Pro or anything else. But this whole thing has been a fun learning process for me and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. This is Dom and I'll catch you in the next video.